Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I'm sorry, I could have just, I couldn't say that. Um, I still haven't seen Tiger King. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I am feeling very relieved that this is our second to last week. Um, and this is your last video of the week. So only a couple more assignments and we are completely finished with this very crazy record-breaking semester. Um, so keep up the good work and uh, I hope to see you guys out the other side with your sanity still intact. But anyway, let's talk chemistry. Last video, we were talking about some of the early gas laws and some of the variables that affect gas behavior. We talked about pressure, volume, and temperature, and we learned about two gas laws, Boyle's law and Charles's law. We're gonna recap a little bit of those two laws in the next slide, but I wanna introduce one of the third, the third major gas law, which is called Gay-Lussac's law. Now, Gay-Lussac's law looks at how pressure and temperature are related. And in this case, we are keeping volume and the amount of gas or the moles constant. So we are just digging into how are pressure and temperature related to each other. Now, Gay-Lussac's law states that if the temperature of a gas increases, the pressure increases. So if you think back to Charles's law, Charles's law said that the, if, if the temperature of the gas increases, the volume of the gas increases. But this time we have a fixed volume, meaning the volume cannot change, it's constant. So maybe you've already got a prediction in your head about why the pressure would then increase. Uh, but of course this relationship goes both directions. If the temperature of the gas decreases, the pressure will decrease. And like I said, we have to have a fixed volume and temperatures need to be in Kelvin. So let's investigate a little bit why this occurs. Well, just like in the last, just like in the last law, Charles's law, we have a low temperature and then we have a higher temperature. Unlike the last law, we cannot change the volume of these containers. So the volume has to stay the same but the particles are moving faster. And since they are moving faster, they are hitting the walls of the container more. And we know that pressure is directly related to the number of impacts on the container walls. So the pressure inside the container increases since the walls can't increase. And again, this is a direct relationship. If one goes up, the other one goes up. So just like we saw with Charles's law, we've got pressure, we've got temperature. If one increases, the other increases. Now, if you're thinking on your feet, Charles's law was V1 over T1 over equals V2 over T2. Any guesses on what this Gay-Lussac's law equation is? Hopefully you guessed P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2 because this is gonna very similarly show that direct relationship, just like Charles' law that we talked about in the last video. So let's see if we can use this equation just like we used the last one. We've got a question here, it says, gas has a pressure of 0 0.370 atmospheres at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the new temperature at standard pressure? Okay. Couple of things here. Remember, we must have all of our temperatures in Kelvin. So the second that you read that degree Celsius, maybe I went right by it. You were like, no, Miss McGill, we gotta convert that to Kelvin. Yes, we have to convert this to Kelvin. So we take this 50 degrees and we add 273. 50 plus 273 is 323 Kelvin. So we've at least converted the temperature there, but let's investigate a couple of other situations. So we've got the pressure, we've got um, standard pressure. We need to figure out what's the new and what's the old, what's the initial, what's the final. It says, what is the new temperature? So I'm gonna say new indicates that we're gonna solve for T2. This T2 occurs at standard pressure. So I'm gonna assume that that pressure is P2. The question is what is standard pressure? 
that goes back to STP. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is one atmosphere. So that's P2 is one atmosphere. Which means this other pressure that's written in the problem, 3.70 atmospheres, must be P1. So it looks like we've got everything that we need here. We can just plug into the equation, right? Just like on Boyle's and Charles Law problems, I want you to take the equation that you're given. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And I want you to rearrange it for the variable that you are solving for. So in this case, we are solving for T2. And I need to get T2 by itself. The problem that I see right now is that T2 is currently in the bottom. I'm going to need T2 to be on the top to really isolate it. So to get T2 on the top, I actually need to multiply by T2 on both sides. Because I want to get rid of it on the bottom, I want to move it to the top. So if I multiply by T2, now that gives me nothing, you know, just P2 on the right hand side. And it simplifies it a little bit to P2 equals T2 times P1 over T1. Now, this would be a fine stopping point if I was solving for the second pressure, but I'm not. I'm solving for the second temperature. So now I still have to get rid of this. So I have to get rid of this P1 over T1. So I, I need to do some more algebra here. To get rid of the T1, I have to multiply by the T1. Okay, so multiplying by T1, and that will help. And then I also have to divide by P1. So divide both sides by P1. When you do that, the T1s cancel out and the P1s cancel out, and you're left with a nice formula for T2 here. T2 equals T1 times P2 over P1. Hopefully you followed that algebra. If you didn't, um, maybe watch again. Um, then just refresh some of your algebra things. I'd be happy to talk it over with you on Zoom as well. But ultimately you come to this formula here that T2 equals T1 times P2 over P1. And now we just need to plug it into the equation. We know that T1 in Kelvin is 323 Kelvin times P2, that's our standard pressure, the 1.00 atmospheres. And P1 is 0 0.370 atmospheres. Now I just need to solve for my answer. And with sig figs, I get a new temperature of 873 Kelvin. Now let's just double check that things all canceled out like we needed them to. The atmospheres and the atmospheres cancel, that bodes well. Now, does this answer make sense? Well, we need to go back to that direct relationship. We saw the pressure increase from 0.37 to 1.0. So the pressure went up. That means we should have seen the temperature go up. And it did, it went from 323 to 873. So this checks out, we should be all good to go on this problem. I'm just going to do the one example since we did many similar problems uh, on the worksheet with Charles Law and Boyle's Law. If you need more help with this, again, I encourage you to get on the Zoom um, and ask your questions or email me. Again, I do want to draw your attention to this last line here. Please look out for sneaky problems that give you mismatching units. Um, you may or may not have seen that on the Charles and Boyle's Law Worksheet. You will continue to see that. Make sure you are looking out for those mismatching units. If the units don't cancel, then there is a mistake somewhere. Moving on to the next gas law, we have this fancy gas law here called the Combined Gas Law. Now, the previous three gas laws that we've talked about have just been looking at two of the variables, you know, pressure, temperature, volume, temperature, pressure, volume. What the combined gas law does is look at pressure, volume, and temperature, all three together, and only the amount of gas is kept constant. And we call it the combined gas law because 
if you look, it's literally a combination of the previous three laws. I can cover up any one variable, say that temperature is held constant. If temperature is held constant, then I have P1 over P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, which is Boyle's law. So I've got pressure and volume, which is Boyle's law. Or if I uh, hold the pressure constant, pressure constant, now I've got V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And that's the second law that we learned about, Charles' law. So Charles' law has to do with volume and temperature. And then the last law is the one that we just learned about here. This is if we keep the volume constant, then we have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, and that's Gay-Lussac's law. So this combined gas law is really just a combination of the three laws that we have already learned. So if you can memorize just one equation, not that you really have to memorize it because uh, this isn't the classroom setting, um, but if you only want to remember one equation, this would be the equation to remember because all of the other equations can be decided based off of this one, right? You just cover up whatever is held constant and you've got the law that you're looking for. But let's do an example of what the math looks like for one of these big combined gas law problems. The question says, what is the volume of a gas at 0 0.950 atmospheres and 25 degrees Celsius? Oh, it says degrees Celsius. I'm not even going to read the rest of the question. I'm just going to convert it right now. You take 25 plus 273, and that gives us 298 Kelvin. Okay, uh, so the initial, the, what is the volume of gas at 0 0.950 atmospheres and 25 degrees Celsius? If its initial volume is 26.3 liters at 1.25 atmospheres and 14 degrees Celsius. Oh, I've got another degree Celsius. 14 plus 273 equals 287 Kelvin. Okay, let's figure out what I have here. Well, I'm going to draw initially on this keyword here, initial. So this initial volume here is 26.3 liters. And that initial volume holds true at this 1.25 atmosphere. So I'm going to assume that's my initial pressure or my P1. And this 287 Kelvin is my T1. That would mean that anything in the first half of the problem is actually the second or the final. So it says, what is the volume? So I'm going to solve for volume two of a gas at this pressure here, pressure two and temperature two. So now I've got everything all labeled out. I just need to put it into my equation. The equation is P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And just like with these other problems, I want you to isolate the variable you're solving for. So we are solving for V2, which means I need to get it by itself. So I'm going to need to multiply both sides by T2 and divide both sides by P2. So let's see, P1, P2, over P2. Now, when I multiply by this fraction here, the T2s cancel out on the right-hand side, which is what I was looking for. And the P2s also cancel out. Again, that's what I'm looking for. And my new equation is V2 equals T2 times P1 times V1 all over P2 times T1. Now, with this many variables, it is so important, more important than ever, that you pay attention very carefully to what numbers you're plugging in where. So as we go to plug this in, make sure that you're plugging in T2 on the top. T2 is 298 Kelvin. We're going to multiply by P1, which is 1.25 atmospheres. And then we've got 
again, the multiplication by B1, which is 26.3 liters. We're going to divide all of that by P2. P2 is 0 0.950 atmospheres. And T1 is 298. Oh, T1. See? I, man, just right there. I almost fell into the trap. T1 is what we're multiplying by, and T1 is 287 Kelvin. All right, so now we've got everything all set up. We just need to solve. So we multiply everything together on the top and then divide it by everything that's on the bottom. And when we do that and use sig figs, we get an answer of 35.9 liters. Now, let's double check that these units are the units that I know I'm supposed to end up with. I was solving for volume, so it makes sense, sense that I should get liters. The Kelvins both cancel out, and the atmospheres both cancel out, leaving me just with the liters, which tracks. Uh, and there you have it. This is the combined gas law. So this is the big culmination of the three previous gas laws that we've learned. But at this point, you might be wondering, uh, Miss McGowan, when are we ever going to talk about moles? I said at the beginning of the first video, that there were four variables that affected gas behavior, pressure, volume, temperature, and amount of gas or moles. Let's go back to our good friend, Avogadro. Now, in the last unit, if you will, we learned that one mole of any gas has the same volume, and that volume is 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. So we aren't changing the temperature and pressure. They are both constant. They are both constant, so we can ignore them. We know that this is true. So Let's put a mathematical law to this. Avogadro's law says that if the amount of gas in a container is increased, the volume increases because at any one time, one mole has to have the same volume. So if we increase the volume, then we must also be increasing the number of moles. But we have to make sure that we have a flexible container to see this law. Um, and you know, this makes perfect sense. We've got more particles that take up more space. So we have, again, a direct relationship, right? We've got volume and number of moles. As one goes up, the other one goes up. More particles take up more space. Every single time you blow up a balloon, you prove this law, because you are adding particles and the volume increases because we have a flexible container in the balloon. So just like the previous direct relationships, we have another division equation here. And this is Avogadro's law, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Now, can we do some math with this equation? Well, let's see, it says, a sample of gas contains 3.72 moles of gas. If the volume is changed from 8.4 to 6.1, what happens to the amount of gas? Now, it is crucial here that N be in moles. You might see me in a problem in a very sneaky manner, give you grams, in which case you would need to convert grams to moles using molar mass. Again, be very wary of those sneaky mismatching units. But I digress. Let's look at this problem. It says that the sample contains 3.72 and then the volume is changed. So this 3.72 moles must be the N1. And then the V1 is the 8.4 liters. The V2 is the 6.1 liters. And we are solving for N2. We can predict what's going to happen here. The volume went down from 8.4 to 6.1. So we can predict that the number of moles will also have decreased. Let's see if we can mathematically prove that. We've got our equation, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. 
I need to solve for n2. So I'm going to need to multiply both sides by n2. And then I'll get n2 times v1 over n1 equals v2. But I don't want to solve for v2. I want to solve for n2. So I have to multiply by n1 over v1. And then these will cancel out and I'll actually be left with n2. So my formula is n2 equals v2 times n1 over v1. And now I just need to plug in my numbers, just like we've been doing. So volume 2, 6.1 liters, times N1, 3.72 moles, divided by volume 2, which is divided by volume 1. Man, i got to watch those subscripts, guys. Sorry. 8.4 liters. And the liters are going to cancel out, which is good because I want to solve for moles. And when I plug this into my calculator and use sig figs, I get 2.7 moles, which we predicted, right? We said that the volume went down. And so if the volume goes down, the number of moles also has to go down. And it did. It went from 3.72 to 2.7 moles. And that's all I have for you this week on gas laws. So you've actually learned five gas laws, the Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law, the combined gas law, and Avogadro's law. Can you believe it? Next week, we're going to learn another law. But for this week, this is it. You've just got five equations there. Hopefully, you can start keeping them all straight if you want to rewatch this video or the previous video. I highly recommend it. Uh, but that's it. I'll leave you to your worksheets.